So it seems I'm on to the, the next thing and I often, I'm not sure why I doubt myself. I often go, oh, I'm just going to start right now. <laughs> and yep, you're just going to start right now. Um, I was hearing last night um, and really getting close to, to the idea of how am I going to proceed forward now that I've had some closure in terms of getting a date um, on the calendar for when I need to leave the home that I'm in and the life that I no longer really live. It's in a transition period and I'm shutting all of that down. And May 1st is the date, uh, the last date that I can be here um, in this particular residence. And, you know, how do I I was kind of not wigging out exactly. It was kind of a toss up between emotion and intellect of, all right, my emotions actually feel very solid. Whereas my intellect is going, you're not really working on a budget. You're not working on a plan. You're not really doing this. And was getting a little monkey mind with it and working me just a bit. And so I was listening to some, um, my favorite readers and um, tarot and Oracle readers on YouTube and the message was becoming clear to me that I, I hear that I need to be working on, you know, the logistics, et cetera. And so I thought, well, you know, I always, just as I start talking, you know, just start walking in the right direction and then you'll know. And so I said, well, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to the guidance and the urgings of, hey, um, you might want to, from the Oracle readers and such, you might want to consider sitting down and getting a plan and, you know, for a project that you're working on and blah, blah, blah. And I thought, I'm not really working on a project. And, oh, it's a huge project, baby. It's the rest of your life, you know, that shut down the first 50 years. And, you know, by my 53rd birthday, I'll be almost a month into not here in a whole, you know, a whole old me that doesn't exist anymore with any of the people that I ever knew in my life before. It just, that's the way it is. And, you know, how I arrived here and all the sadness and grief and blah, 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 trauma is, it doesn't matter. You know, by the time I have my 53rd birthday, I won't be here. I absolutely, you know, it went through legal and that's, I finally got the date and that was just Wednesday and today is just Good Friday. So things are moving at a rapid pace and so I have to really remind myself with that emotional side going, yeah, just chill, just chill. But the, the uh, monkey mind kind of going, well, I don't know. And I wasn't feeling the anxious. It was actually running that little crazy uh, mouse wheel of what I should be doing. And I thought, well, that's, this is ridiculous, you know, that I'm listening to the Oracle readers and they're saying, work on it. And I said, how about I just stop what I'm doing and get hold of what do I need to be doing to answer the call of whatever is feeling that anxiety agenda in my head, because I don't feel like I feel that way. Do I in fact feel that way? And I didn't, I feel very safe and secure in knowing that I don't live here anymore. That's a fact. It's legal. It's done. It's, you know, things were done that I wasn't aware of. And I, you know, I had no way to make a change on that. And I wasn't willing to stay around where this is and stay stuck to that old lifestyle any longer to fight it out. And um, that went right up to the very end, you know, on the edge of speaking to legal the very day that there was a hearing, you know, that was just Wednesday, today is Friday and Palm Sunday was just, you know, just Sunday and Monday, Thursday, and then today is Good Friday and Sunday will be Easter. Hi. And so I have to give myself a lot of space and tell that, you know, agenda thing, look, I have to relax because I have a month to clear and I need to, I'm rebuilding and starting over. I mean, absolutely starting over from scratch, not just the new me, that's been in place since I was going through a divorce um, two and a half years ago. I left abruptly, you know, all at one time, entire, you know, life and everybody I knew cleared out. Okay, we're through. Then it was really wild and it was bizarre. And I knew, you know, when it happened that, oh, okay, that's the way that is. And there can't be any going back because I can't unknow that. I can't, you know, go back to sleep as it were. Um, and so it has to proceed forward. And now that it's gone to that legal channel of, you know, Wednesday that I'm not willing to stay here and play. And I'm also not really willing to go to court this afternoon. And I was 
you know, it looked like I was dragging my feet and I was getting a little bit, you know, that monkey mind and I was actually starting to feel that anxiety a bit of what am I doing, you know? And it's like just discipline. I spend a lot of time in a lucid dreaming kind of state with disciplining myself, with following direction from spirit. This is what you really could benefit from doing and should, it started to come out. And anytime there's a should, I tell myself, shh, uh, sh because a should is automatically gonna set up some resistance possibly in me. So far it does, you know, anybody tells me I should do something, that's gonna, you know, trigger sometimes and why would spirit, divinity and the divine put me in that position and why would I? Why don't I be ahead of the game and more proactive and say, look, let's just take it out. And that's when I started to get the information of, it's just days. It seems like it's, you know, decades. However, it's just days and you're rebuilding from foundation up two and a half years later, divorce cleared finally after two years almost, um, dragging it on and on that, you know, that's over in August last year and then other stuff happened that I didn't have any control over and it was clearing out and had this date on Wednesday with the court and it was finally just, all right, discipline, 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 just chill out and, oh, okay, I, I don't wanna do this, I wanna do that and I'd like to have do, do, do. Can we make that happen and go boo boo? <laughs> and lawyer was, you know, saying, well, I, you know, let me see what I can do. And we had approximately an hour and a half before the court hearing was supposed to happen in Zoom fund. And I just didn't want to do it. I was not, had not showered yet. I had cleared out um, the entire shed in a matter of 20 minutes in between phone calls with legal counsel. There were three phone calls from him and between the first and the second, I went out and cleared the shed and had no idea whenever I went outside <laughs> that I was gonna start ripping up, you know, different things in the yard that have just been there as a temporary, you know, little fence here and there to to keep the dogs from digging at, you know, at that spot and at the foundation. There's just, it's, it's absolute, you know, <laughs> trashy living, just getting by, getting by, getting by with when is this gonna stop? And so it stopped and I knew, okay, the dragonfly was saying, you know, excuse me, the, the grasshopper on the fence, maybe a week before, days before, I don't really remember, was saying, take the leap. And I couldn't imagine, you know, what was that meaning of take the leap because that grasshopper sat there the whole time I was on the, the phone and um, before Wednesday, uh, maybe it was only Monday of this week, I don't really remember, it doesn't matter, but um, it was, I looked it up and take the leap and I thought, what's the leap that I need to take beyond, you know, I'm going to court in a few days and, you know, what's that leap? I've already paid and done all this stuff. Is there more of a leap beyond that? Because, you know, dang. And the leap, in fact, was, yeah, go ahead and tell him to move along with, please, you know, I just want to shut it down. I thought I had make my, made myself clear and he and I were not on the same page about what I was expecting of that hearing. I had no idea. And I said, oh, you know, and it looked like, it could have looked like I was just being irresponsible. I mean, I could have let myself get into a whole tragedy and miserable existence there with, you know, self-recrimination. And rather than do that, it's like, okay, now's the time to call the lawyer. And it was about an hour and a half, maybe an hour and 45 minutes before that hearing. And you know, he's like, we don't have much time and da, da, da. And I thought, no, that's, that's my divine and it doesn't work on your time. You know, sorry about that, but it's, you know, I, I don't work on your schedule. I work on, you know, my discipline and my, my divinity that I'm skilling it up with it and learning to hone it on, you know, rapid pace. Then it's going to be, you know, timing in very cosmic ways that are out of my quantum ability to do anything more than what I was doing, which is put it out there in quantum fun that's synergistically moving up and in a higher frequency and a higher, higher vibration than to stay in the lateral combat zone. Quantum combat is just absolutely no fun. And that's what we had been doing through all these legal processes and just a lot of emotional stuff that was holding me here. And when I finally had, you know, giant grasshopper take the leap and I didn't know, I just was saying, please just do this and then pull into Wednesday, hour and a half before. Oh yeah, and right at 3.15 whenever, <laughs> 
court was supposed to happen, my phone, dun, 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 Star Wars, very significant for me, the buns. Um, I, I, I saw it originally, you know, in the theater, what? Yeah, in the theater a million times, um, that the phone rang and it was the paralegal by that third time that says, you're good to go. And I had already paid him. And how am I gonna pay for this? And how am I gonna, yeah, well, it doesn't matter. You know, it's done. And that's what I needed was it has to be finished because I'm not willing to give away any more of the rest of my life to this process. So it has to close out because I don't wanna play. I don't wanna bet the odds on that. I don't care what they are. I didn't, you know, didn't really want to engage in that that way anyway. So just shut it down and cosmic fun, quantum, you know, uh, doodling went right on into, woo, there's the, there's the artistry of listening to my divinity. Tell me how we're going to scoot that through and how that looked out here. He was seemingly a little bit perturbed and I thought, well, it's just the way it is, man. You know, um, you're going to have to take some sort of accountability for the fact that you could have called me. I shouldn't have had to call you, in my opinion, just an hour and a half before the hearing to find out what it was all about <laughs> and why I was kind of winging out and going, oh, I don't really know. And it doesn't matter. There was no shame in it and no blame in it. It was just kind of a little tiny bit confrontational. And I said, look, you know, I just really, I need to close this out. It's really important to me. And I'm not responsible for what happens, justice and all that. I'm not here to seek that. I, you know, did not fully understand the whole process to begin with. And second, you know, after that being the first concern or the first consideration is that it doesn't matter. I'm not willing to go any further. And I don't want to. So, you know, and then I'm not as a third going to fill in with all these explanations and justifications for why, you know, I didn't call Well, I didn't call because it's none of his business. It wasn't even any of mine <laughs> except to say, we discipline, baby. We discipline all day and all night. I mean, it's a, a very conscious choice to be in that lucid dreaming state and to choose to stay very connected to my earpiece of what I'm hearing from inspiration, divinity, spirit, God, guides, whatever it is that, you know, other people call that. I've got, you know, what I call it and what I know to be true for me. And I, you know, don't really explain it to thee unless we're in some sort of a teaching, you know, learning thing where somebody wants to know something about that, that's fine. However, if it's questioning me and my divinity, mm, I'm, I'm not going to feel okay about that. And, you know, I, that's coming into my temple and disrespecting it. And whether I'm Christian or not, that's just not okay. <laughs> so to disrespect anyone's temple that way, um, and putting something on me that's going to be shaming, blaming, judging, etc from outside is going to be much easier if I'm already doing it and hanging that doorknob or the unicorn horn of, you know, I'm already doubting myself. That's like putting something on social media and, you know, tweet that I, I have self-doubt. I'll have a retweet 200 million times before the two, two minutes has gone by. And so, you know, I'm not going to come out of the gate with an explanation for why I exist. I mean, that's basically what that turns into is I'm justifying why I did that and, did, and starting to go through that whole process. And he really doesn't care. His attitude, you know, cleaned up pretty quickly with, let's just cut right to the chase of this is what I really would like. And can you do that <laughs> and get it done? Because divinity had already told me it had come out of my mouth in a previous video that I do many just for myself to, you know, listen to divinity speaking through a different Oracle. Um, even though it's my, my face, it's still, I channel information. I'm going to say things that I'm not consciously aware of until I go back and watch the video. And excuse me, I had already known that it's going to be that I'm not going to be going to Zoom court. That's just going to work out. And that I did know that. And I also am very keenly aware with my grown up person who's, you know, got to be a human being and know that we have free will. And then it's in my personal understanding is not already laid out in a dictated, detailed, you know, life plan of, you know, that's already 
written out and that synchronicity, et cetera, isn't, it, it hasn't already been pre-planned because we have free will. We have the ability to change our minds and we do all the time. So I just knew, and I also was aware that even though my intuition, the read on it energetically is, yeah, that's not happening. Um, my grown up or my, you know, human being has to also go with the flow and know that free will could dictate that that's, you know, going to need to happen in a different way and not let any of that, you know, not hanging any little unicorn horn or, or horns or doorknobs out there will prevent me from taking on any anxiety that I stay very clear and then I can hear and I'm reading that energy right up until it's manifesting however it looks and i knew i mean my conscious mind was very aware even though that paradigm was trying to monkey mind hard with why are you waiting so long and um you know why don't you call him and there was just that quiet reassurance of you're gonna wait until i think it was 11 44 or something like that maybe it was or 12 44 it was a very specific time and 10, 11, that's funny. Um, anyway, it was a very specific time and court was set for a very specific time and I didn't, hadn't even cut, uh, contacted him or been in touch with him to find out how that was going to go. And so there's just that quiet reassurance and knowing that I can be on the fly because I, if I have to go improv, then I have to go improv. However, my life as improv, no thanks. I, that's not how I want to do that because that's not setting me up for success. That's setting me up to be standing around with my my horn ripped off and stabbed in the eye with it and feeling bad about myself. And by putting up kind of the barrier or the, you know, guard, it, it can be called whatever it wants, putting up that understanding of energetically, I'm not explaining myself to be unless, you know, there's some reason legally, <laughs> which he didn't have any reason, then, you know, shove off is kind of how I feel about that in a kind and loving way right up until, you know, it needs to be a lot more firm. And I find that the more I listen to my divine, I don't have to have those interactions with people because I don't set myself up for failure, first of all. And second of all, if I'm listening very closely, then I already intuitively can read and understand and know how that's kind of working its way through and how it's going to go. So... Um, and I'm not sure where I was headed beyond that, except to know that, um, oh yeah, I, I, I finished that out Wednesday and yesterday, uh, ended up doing, I don't even know what, I can't remember. Um, oh, I think I ended up putting videos up for something. I don't remember. I mean, it was just each day seems like it's a mile away from the day before and it's just getting a whole lot done and there wasn't a plan. And today, Friday, good Friday. Um, it's two or three in the afternoon, maybe. And I had been hearing, okay, start working on a budget, start working on a plan, start working on this. And I had asked, you know, how am I going to get that done? What, what needs to be, um, what should it started to come out and mm -mm. what needs to be happening? How can I be, you know, always refining my game, refining my game and stay very connected and very disconnected from any emotional baggage that would hook me in and a vibration or frequency that's going to drag me down because those places where energy is speaking to me and it's coming through collectives that are higher vibration, way higher vibration than me, it feels so comforting and it's just so, I'm feeling it now and reassuring, thank you very much, that that's such a peaceful place to be. And if I'm spending most of my time in that connection, then that means that when I am pulled away with human being nests, which is quite normal, um, then it means I deal with that far better and I'm back to that synchronicity much quicker in earth time and I get back to that flow of the no, which is just so much more comfortable. Now, excuse me, as I was talking to my mentors, my guides, I, you know, I call them by their names and Marvin is a tree that I have a whole um, collective of, of uh, tree energy that is as known as an entity 
Narvin, and I have um, the the entity that was a dog in my life named Sweetums, and so Tweeters was his um, nickname, and Tweeters revealed himself as that to me. I knew it was a presence that was very close to me, and um, that I knew very intimately, and knew very well, and was not revealed until maybe a month ago that hey, that's me, <laughs> that's me. And that's cool because we were very close in person and you know, so many things were resolved um, when that was revealed to me and I was able to really heal more from when he was, uh, when he passed away, it was not very pleasant. It was after, you know, the divorce had been initiated and it just didn't go very well or very nicely. Um, due to some logistical stuff that just got hung up and gunked up in, you know, emotional turmoil and quantum combat with, you know, that's a, a lateral thing. And I'm looking to always be going up and spinning flat or, you know, staying in that quantum field of combat. No, thanks. You know, I'd like to get out of that vibrational field altogether and be beyond it because there isn't any amount of ascend ascend if it's going to hit a glass ceiling and I'm never going to be able to burst beyond it and that connection with tweeters and marvin and there's a collective of they they don't really have a name they're just they're like they're they're fairies and dragons and dragonflies and they come in actual you know form of dragonflies and kind of the critter crowd um that's kind of you know the fae are included perhaps in the critter crowd would be more understandable out here i guess you can tell that it's those and then there's um a very protective and large i mean <laughs> solid um shogun type energy that you know, that's what they do. And then there are archangels, um, Metatron and Uriel and Michael are some of the, the ones that stay pretty routinely with me, especially over the last um, few months and uh, the last six to 12 months for definitely sure. And absolutely in the last month or two, uh, Uriel and, and um, Michael, and excuse me, and Metatron, for that protection, it's been, you know, kind of that spiritual warfare kind of stuff going on just with that, you know, that's quantum combat with, you know, that exchange is going to be coming back at me, um, you know, reverberating and asking that, that equation to not be gravity that will fall flat <laughs> if we, you know, really looked at what was the truth of that is that that equation is just, it's wrong and it's going to keep, for me, it's going to keep reverberating back to me as wrong equation, wrong equation, wrong equation. And I, I don't want to sit around doing bad math. So how about I plug in the tweeters and Marvin and Shoguns and, you know, et cetera, and be really heavily working with how do I develop those skills of moving my energy as I'm learning to really channel and hear just fine and move that energy in the healing frequency, which is a different frequency often often in terms of physical healing with my own um, a shoulder injury that was a traumatic injury that was just, whoo, it's got some some baggage with it, it that energetically it has some ancient baggage with it and some stories in there that I, I don't always know, you know, I don't remember all the details necessarily consciously. I just know that when I get that information, like, oh, that fills it in, that fills it in, and that fills it in, kind of puts a little checklist um, in a lot of different places and it just collapses timelines and they go away and quantum battle is just dissolved and I'm lifting up, lifting up, lifting up like a balloon, you know, lifting up out of that as that old baggage is just, it's collapsing away from me and I'm lifting it away from it. And it's much easier to do that by staying connected to those um, energies. So as I was saying, you know, today, how will I do that? what is today bringing? What is today's surprise? How shall I move forward with my uh, divinity, my expression of it now that I have, you know, a date must be out by, how shall I work that out today? And I all of a sudden, after kind of meandering around, you know, for a few hours this morning and doop de doop de do and kind of going in and out with the dogs and chilling out and munching, you know, do 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 all of a sudden, here I am and I have 
finished on, you know, this very bare house that has, you know, not a whole lot left in it, <laughs> you know, kind of, kind of some, you know, raunchy looking stuff, uh, classy one day, trashy at the moment, <laughs> kind of, because it's just, these are the resources I had and I'm not putting, you know, finances into a house and letting colors sing to me and really work with me and how I can move my divinity forward. Um, that I, I started writing is where I was headed with that, excuse me, get a little bit distracted, that um, I do, 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 just kind of hanging out and all of a sudden, I think I'm gonna go over to that dry erase board and just start writing some things down. And next thing I know, I've got everything laid out, organized, and my plan for what needs to be done around the house itself to clear it of the physical items and, and et cetera, the logistics for the house, closing it out, um, personal, you know, what I need to do for my own personal person as a human being. And then, you know, uh, the YouTube channel itself and those, that type of stuff to get my business going and off the ground, that, and then what I need to buy in preparation for not living here anymore, which is a very, you know, short list, thank goodness, because I got rid of 99% of what I had. Um, skip the the critters the, the live critters they'll stay with me that's what i was planning from the very beginning I, and what i was holding out for and what i was telling the the lawyer that look i don't care anymore i have my priorities down to five four leggeds and me and that's that's all i need to know is let's lose this terrible show and let me get on um with my life because it's going somewhere besides waiting, waiting, waiting for somebody else to not want to do anything but eternity of combat quantumly is just, it's painful and it's not going anywhere. I'd rather do that infinity where it's going to eight, 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 eight and rise up and not wait, 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 because when we're in this emotional connections or entanglements that are just really problematic and we can feel the the pain and stuff that's just not an area for me that i need to hang out it's not a matter of healing it's a matter of healing right to the point of understanding that oh once i spend enough time in that new frequency i don't have to go back there unless i'm guided to do so and when i am then i don't go into that vibration very much i can get sucked in if i'm not you know paying very close attention um and not spending enough time perhaps in my divine to be very ready for a, you know brace for impact kind of thing and i've gotten sideswiped over the last three or four months with with a few little psychic attacks kind of thing um once or twice and basically no I'm, I'm holding pretty tight that once i got the news of yeah you're you're dumped and we're done um it clicked in almost immediately of oh yeah i remember my divinity and who and what i am and this isn't going to work this is you're not going to be a part of me any more than i'm a part of the this is separating immediately and it just timeline didn't separate out quite so immediately unfortunately um because we're doing an eternity this way of quantum combat. <laughs> and I don't want to play quantum hockey because Sweetums, you know, speaking to me through spirit, through energy, whatever you would call that, um, is so comforting. And that's a, a sweet place to be. And I can find great uh, fun and creative genius in hooking into that spot and not just, you know, marinating in the juices of a dead dog. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that's kind of the, the bridge of getting me there. And that's the hopping point to being able to explore and find all new options, all new ways to do my life and repurpose things and get rid of 99% of things that I owned and, you know, get my clothing down to 15 or 20 pieces of clothing and that's it. Um, and have, you know, basically nothing in terms of stuff and have boxes of mementos that, you know, for my children and that's it. I have no need to carry anything else with me any more than I ever did before. I always took with me, whenever I moved anywhere before I got married, I always took with me what was important to me and it was my memorabilia from 
uh, a childhood in terms of what I had created myself, scrapbooks and you know uh, photo albums for, that I had done for me. And as that grew, that's now what I have is those scrapbooks, gifts from my kids and different things that were exchanged between us um, that are contained within a certain number of boxes and that's it, you know? So I had my priorities in check before I ever, you know, hit the ground running as an adult about what was important to me because all of those scrapbooks and yearbooks and, and albums, et cetera, not yearbooks, not so much, um, you know, it, they're not leaving yet, I don't know why, but it doesn't matter that that was always my priority and I have all of that. Plus I have all this stuff for my kids. And I also have a whole bunch of crap that people just abandoned here. They didn't want it, it got left here and you know, sloppy divorce, then it's just, it, and, and that lifestyle of just kind of letting energetic ties just, those will turn into Medusa all day long the minute they're activated in that quantum battlefield of, you know, there's sketchy and kind of energy that's frazzled and and it's angry, upset, you know, emotional, then it's going to charge and activate perhaps and throw forward unnecessary baggage. And as I'm closing them out, I'm using different rituals and different prayers and different things that I do all day as I'm getting the information about how to do that and shut it down all the way to balance the equation without having to do face-to-face -face conversation with anyone in human skin or, you know, not. I mean, sometimes there's astral visitation and that's very careful because you can't just drop in on the spot. That's not allowed. That's that not for me personally. And why Metatron was, was very, very much, please help me to reinforce and stay reinforced and stay aware of how to keep my biosphere very protected and safe while I'm vulnerable and feeling sad and, you know, lost, etc. I'm a human being and I have emotions. I don't want to spend time in the slog and slosh though of those emotions that just feel really horrible. And why would I, when I already know that I can go to a complete different frequency, it's just a matter of, it doesn't have to evolve directly. It won't evolve from yuck feeling all the way to, you know, who that's just sweetness. Um, with tweeters, it's not going to go directly and it will go much faster though, if I'm going with the flow of the no, and it's my no, and I know not somebody else's no that was dictated to me that it's never worked until you're dumped, you're done. Okay, cool. Then I'm left to rebuild and I'll start over with what I believe and bring my intuition in, in a whole new way and move my energy as I'm channeling, as I'm healing, doing some distance healing, that distance meaning across the room with the animals that I live with, that are three cats and uh, two dogs. So it's been a really interesting day that this all has unfolded with, here's the plan. And I have, you know, financially, to make a budget and that's it. And then the rest of logistics and what have you is on the board. And because it's on the dry erase board, I had started with writing it in a, a journal. And next thing I knew, I'm writing it all out on, you know, two hours later, I'm writing it all out on the dry erase board, which of course makes more sense because I'm going to have changes to that. And, and you know, I, I can get into that OCD spot where I'll be ripping the journal apart because it doesn't look right. And why waste time? Divine is very streamlined and I'm not going to be able to get to the most streamlined vibration of synergy, right? And synchronicity, which is those things falling into the flow and working very well for me. And that just works so much better when I allow that to happen in real time here on earth after it's been very disciplined and brought forward in quantum time and the insistence upon discipline, 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 and also allowing myself to live in my skin. I am a human being. I have emotional needs and I have to deal with any kind of a activation of that would come up. And they now mostly happen in the logistics part, 
department up in my mind that, you know, there's monkey magic happening up there. Well, shouldn't I be? And it's just a kind reminder of saying, yeah, remember the, the synergy of that is that I get to choose how I can ascend or stay in this place or actually energetically go down even further. And I'm not willing to go down any further than the, the, the most bottomest point, the bottom most point that I was. And I'm not willing to descend into that, you know, field, even at the very top of that. I'm willing only to remain as high a frequency as I can as a human being when I need to deal with the outside world, that's gonna happen so much easier for me to maintain that in outside world ops whenever I spend most of my time in the lucid dreaming and meditative state and everything I do is in a very um, integrity filled sublime. You know, that's just the way it is for me and I live by myself and that's what I choose to do. It's my priority to do it that way then it's just, it, it works better. It's my goal, it's my mission to get my business up and going and show other people, tell other people about how it is that we can heal and we can go forward from all of the different things that happened to us. I mean, I have baggage that sounds horrible because it was and, you know, trauma that is quite significant and betrayal, et cetera. And I have so many knowings for me of how that can be brought forward without it devastating people and without it, you know, causing them to just absolutely give up. I mean, there have been plenty of times in the last two and a half years whenever I just, I didn't have anything physically left to give and that little spark of divinity in me, it was going, oh, you know, keep going, keep going. And my physical body just, you know, very, 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 very overburdened with, you know, flashbacks and you know initially that started the whole ball rolling and then it just kept going in this quantum battlefield of just you know that exchange of pain is keeping that lateral exchange and that entanglement right there and as I was able to get away from that get away from that get away from that and start doing you know the things that really sang to me to dance and to really take music in to sing again um, and to really remember those things about what I did when I was a kid, even when I couldn't physically do anything except kind of lay there, you know, feeling a little bit, mm, I'd go back to my imagination of what I used to really like to do and be thinking about doing that. And that was as a result of being willing to open my mind about, you know, what I'm willing to listen to and Oracle readers and tarot. And I've always been pretty open-minded and I don't subscribe to reincarnation and past lives and Akashic records myself. So I'm, I have my, you know, my own parameters that I'm, I guide myself and that I hear based on what I know to be what's coming in my ear. That's the guidance and that's how I arrived here. Every single time I'm arriving here, wherever here is in quantum world, in philosophy and, you know, uh, out here in 3D and I don't really subscribe either to a million Ds of non 3D. That's just because to me, that's a waste of my time to try to track and, you know, I, I don't want to be doing that. That's not my priority and doesn't mean that other people are wrong. However, you get to, you know, your song, please get there and, you know, get there short, not long, uh, because it just is so much nicer to be in that frequency of what is my song rather than trying to sing someone else's version of that and sing it, you know, flat, flat, flat and hate it every second and not really know why. And there aren't enough positive affirmations that I could say to get my uh, frequency from that to where it is today. There wasn't going to be. And no matter how much journaling, no matter how many years of therapy, it was almost instantly rectified with Oh, clarity of, oh, I see, I was in a paradigm and I need to be in this one, not that one. I need to be in a different understanding that, yeah, I don't do that. And I remember that because I remember being a child and divinity as children, they are God's gate. They are right there at God's gate, holding it open and saying, come on, you know, let's go have fun, little friend. And that was something that I reached by 
being willing to talk to my dead dog <laughs> and a tree and be very intimately sharing space and energy with the Fae and with other collectives that if I hadn't been willing to open my mind and go there, I would be dead because I would have just given up in my person and there wasn't any contract that was going to keep me here. There wasn't any contract that was going to, you know, have me remain because I, my will to live had just been stripped and, I, you know, if I hadn't been willing. So that's where um, I believe I will leave it for now. I always tend to say that and then I talk for another 20 minutes. So these can be too long though. And I don't wish to overwhelm um, myself or anyone else. It's just very exciting to me to know that by going with the flow and being in the know with the flow that it just works so much better and synchronicity is easier to sink into and be a part of that frequency whenever I'm closer to it. I have some struggles whenever I'm coming from the armpit of life up into that, then how about I don't allow myself to fall, you know, that far down and not beat myself up or be, you know, unkind and ask, you know, for the help that in my personal opinion, angels aren't sitting around waiting for me to ask for help and they can't intervene. That hasn't been true for me that I simply say, hey, tweeters, um, can you put a, a kind remind in when you see me sinking? And sometimes it just has to be that there's going to need to be some healing there. And that's a less developed part of me. That's a part of my psyche and a part of my spirit and my energy. However, it doesn't have to sink me all the way down, you know, to the ground to where I'm just going to give up and never, you know, look up again. It doesn't do that anymore because I'm able to take it contextually into a newer understanding of this is grief and it's profound. And the, those experiences have been absolutely, you know, gut wrenching and mind boggling at the intense amount of grief. And yet I also know it closes out. It absolutely shuts out and it closes down entire frequencies and timelines that just, they don't have to exist anymore for anybody. Whoever was attached to it, whether it was me, my own personalities, lifetimes, etc., it's irrelevant because anyone that was attached to it, anyone that was within me, any reincarnate, any of the energy, no matter where it's sourced, that that's no longer needing to be there. Now, how that ripples out quantum field, not in quantum hockey, it causes healing where it's going to ripple out and cause healing, true healing, which any part that's going to close down, I'm not saying that healing doesn't happen any other way. I'm just saying that for me, I know that every single one of those interactions and every single entanglement that's within those entanglements, they're all healed and taken to the next frequency, if you will. So that having been said, um, I'm looking forward to continuing with the YouTube channel and um, growing the, the, um, the subscribers and getting myself out there and launching this and also launching, you know, the rest of my life to travel and be available to mother nature and to me to go out and say, you know, this is what I came here to do. And yep, I fell down and went to sleep for about 50 years. And, you know, it took me a little while to wake all the way up, you know, it didn't, it took me that long to wake up and then have to deal with, oh, buttercup, that's going to be painful to, you know, physically move through some of the trauma and that recall and then you know those exchanges those entanglements that were just continuing on and still would continue on if I was willing to stay there and I'm really grateful that I'm not and that I have a tree and a dead dog I mean as weird as it might sound it's very profound and real to me and I know it to be true and I don't test it it doesn't test me it's just I'm when I start getting that hysteria or that feeling of, I should, a, a very gentle, kind mind will come in and say, have you had any reason to doubt it so far? When you are allowing that to happen naturally, you know, have you had it not work out? And the answer is no. So getting there and helping others get there is very important to me because I want people to not feel stuck and not feel completely, you know, in the miry clay and they just eventually fade away because I absolutely would have died, you know, eventually if I had not been knowing within me deeply 
despite all the trauma, despite all the abandonment, despite that's me. And I know that not everybody is like that and that they will give up. And why that contractual uh, soul contract thing doesn't work for me is that people absolutely, they have free will and they can give up and just say, never mind, I don't want to do this. I, I just changed my mind. And I have seen that happen and I know that to be true. And so, you know, Thank you for, you know, explaining it to me so that I can explain it to them, et cetera. And it helps me to bring my message forward and to help other people. And it doesn't matter to me, honestly, how people arrive at their divinity. As long as it's their divinity, it's always going to be raising their frequency and bringing them to a better and better and better place. And it will necessarily, unfortunately, with those that don't want to quantum entangle in a better way, that aren't willing to grow and know themselves, you know, in a newer, improved version, which I'm, I want to always be the newer, improved version of me, updating, 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 and malware, get the behind me, get, get lost. I always want my device to be updating, updating, updating. And so if people are able to reach that in a very, you know, clean and um, healthy and streamlined way, then they get there quicker and they're likely to get a return on their investment and then start getting, oh, okay, I think I'll do this now and then I'll do this way. And it starts the whole wave, tidal wave, you know, that, that field of dreams and quantum field of dreams is, ends up being a true field of dreams rather than a quantum field of battle where, you know, people just give up, they die and it, or they're literally mind murdered or murdered, murdered, and there's just no need for that. So thank you very much. And thank you for visiting the channel. Thank you for your uh, patronage and your willingness to be here if you've made it this far. Um, if the comments are not yet turned on, they will be. And uh, I hope that you go forth with your day, uh, your time on earth, however you choose to do it, your next three minutes, whatever. Take the opportunity, if you can, to stop for a minute and meet one need inside of you emotionally, not to do something out there, to stop and say your own prayer, your own mantra, your own whatever that tells you a truth about you and maybe ask, what's the safest way that I can ask for help from somebody? And if you don't believe in God or you have a, you know, thing about that or in, and it's real, then how can I ask me? How can I grow my faith in me? How can I grow my faith in my divinity? Because you're holy. You're absolutely holy. You're divine. And you have that spark of divinity that'll flare up in a minute to that fire of whoosh, here I am. And I promise you it's true. I promise you it's true. And if I can do it, so can you. Um, and I'm here to help and show the way for anybody, anyone that does not want to have to do it the hard, 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 hard way. If I know an easier way, then that's my mission here on earth is to bring that forward and help someone else, help other people out that I don't want you to suffer. I don't want you to be in pain and also have to remove myself from places that would drag me down to that emotional pain with them and me where I could definitely feel the pain of that and why there's so much more to be had. And my mission is to bring forth the brilliance of divinity and that creative spark and flaming those fires from within, never asking for anybody else to be the spark, light our spark or fan our flames because that sets up that entanglement. It's just not gonna go well. And we can do that and we can be empowered enough to meet our own needs and also ask divinity how it needs to show up in our worlds. Doesn't matter through the Catholic church, through Buddhism, through whatever. It, I've gone through a lot of, you know, different <laughs> angles myself and it's not labeled any one thing in particular. So thank you again for your time and may your sublime be very peaceful and reassured in knowing that you are a child of divinity and you are held in high regard, respected and able to hold dignity somewhere inside of you. And if you're not able to get that out here all the time or even part of the time or even once or twice, please accept this now and let me tell you that you are absolutely worth it to every single star. You are one. 
you're your own in a galaxy of nothing but you and your brilliance in that quantum field of dreams. So why not make it a field of dreams instead of a field of nightmares? Enjoy and have a great time going forward the next few steps and commit to that. And as you grow, you'll know more. It'll come. I promise. I promise you that. Be well.